y'all. I'm blickety black, blacker than black, black. I'm blacker than black, yo. Because I'm black and I'm black. Yo, I'm black and I'm black. Yeah. Hey. Yo, I know these shit. Stay safe, no more fuck, Trap boy. No, they ain't safe, nigga. Yeah. Ain't no motherfucking secret shit. Yeah. Trap you black, motherfucking nigga. die, nigga. So what? Yo, nigga. You win some, you lose some. But you live, you live to fight another day. You, you, or we could work together. I'm always on the side of money. What do you know about the Flynn family? A little over the top. I've got some that'll kick your teeth in a thousand times. We back in the low-key cave, Keyshawn Knob's YouTube page, aka Mr. Low-Key, and we back with another TV show review. This time, we got Power, Book 4, Force, Season 1, Episode 3, Firestarter. We pretty much back in with Tommy, and we pretty much know as far as the mystery girl who was trying to attack him or whatnot. Like I said, I wasn't familiar with old girl, but we ended up finding out it was a Liliana, and I'm hoping I'm saying her name right, but... She is from the original Power, the first season, and she she was one of the girls, well, not one of the girls, she was the girl who got her face cut by Pete, Sne Pete Snickers, uh, Pete Sneakers, <laughs> that's what everybody be uh, mainly calling her, but Pete Sneakers, she was the one that Kanan had hired, the one who was uh, pretty much trying to sabotage everything as far as the organization, as far as Ghost and Tommy, but not only that, she was the one that Kanan had hired to kill Ghost or whatnot. But anyway, Leanna is the one that got her face slashed in the elevator, and she was the main one that Tommy wanted to kill, but Ghost ended up sending away or whatnot. So it was really interesting to see her come back, but not only that, it was the fact that Tommy ended up finding some old product from the original power and you know this product this product came from the people that was sending out the, the cards or whatnot and there was one of the cards that ghost had found in his office at that uh i forgot what season it was but it was really interesting to see them bring some of the original things back into play from the original power but i'm honestly enjoying what's going on between tommy and leanna you can see leanna she it's uh, definitely reminded Tommy of everything she took in as far as from them. But not only that, the fact that she's been out doing what she's doing as far as when she um, had to leave New York to go to where she was going and leading up to her going into Chicago or whatnot. But as far as her and Tommy, Tommy pretty much just give her an ultimatum, uh, ultimatum or whatnot as far as we either going to work together or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it or whatnot. And this one of the things I'm really enjoying about Tommy overall you still are getting that Tommy that you want, but at the same time, you can tell that Tommy has changed. You can tell that he has things that he, he is not the same Tommy. He was a lot, and a lot of times, you know, Tommy was overreactive. Dude would just go off at the snap of anything or whatnot. But you see later on, even with power or whatnot, and going into this, um, his own solo series or whatnot, he's thinking a lot more before he reacts to certain moments. He even been given out warnings. You know, even with the whole parking lot situation or people trying to park or whatnot in that first episode, if that was Tommy from first the original power, the first season of power, he would have just knocked their ass off. But instead he was telling them going around or whatnot. But you do see different elements with Tommy throughout this um series as far as the solo project but i think a lot of that comes from ghost and him taking in with ghost and everything he was learning now, i ain't gonna say paternity and learning from ghost but the chemistry him and ghost had but not only that you seen how ghost is pretty much his big brother and i really enjoy when it, either somebody mentioned ghost or asked what happened to ghost especially we in uh leanna or whatnot and you know her having that whole history with tommy and ghost Tommy almost turned into like almost child like he almost turned into this little boy who pretty much curls up or whatnot because his big brother is gone it's almost ghost was like that mentor to him you remember the way um his mom used to talk about how you remember when ghosts would come in the neighborhood you know Tommy was like the only white boy in the neighborhood or whatnot and when some people mess with him or whatnot ghosts would come in and help him or whatnot and uh, how they was when they was younger or whatnot it was just that whole thing with him and ghost or whatnot so I really enjoy those moments especially in pertaining to this episode when they mention ghosts and Tommy just almost shuts down he goes out of that whole hardcore mode that whole savage mode and he goes into this real real, real vulnerable mode and I really enjoyed that and shout out to the actor Joe Joseph Sephiric, I mean, oh, my bad for saying his name wrong. <laughs> but anyway, shout out to the actor, man, because he is definitely able to switch it up when he does that. 
going into Diamond and Jared, man. Jannard, my bad. Pretty much, I didn't, I ain't going to say, I, well, yeah, I didn't see this coming, man, but it's definitely deeper, deeper friction going on between Diamond and Jannard. And like I said, I talked about this on the last episode, you know, Diamond has done like what he did, like 15 to 10 years or whatnot, and he was the head of the CBI or CBI and it's the Chicago Boys. Oh, man. I keep forgetting that name, but CIB. I think it's CIB. Y'all let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong. But anyway, he was the head of that organization. And now you see Jannard, which is his younger brother, pretty much got his own little crew going on. He got his own little thing going on. And with Diamond getting out, he's pretty much feeling like he thinks Diamond is, I ain't going to say trying to take over, because Diamond seems like he's trying to get away, especially from the whole street aspect of everything that's going on, but at the same time, he can't help but be around what's going on, especially with his little brother being involved the way he is, but you really, really see in this episode the friction, and it goes really, really deep, honestly, to me, and the whole thing with them fighting with, to me, honestly, man, I did not like that fighting scene, to everybody that's asking about Jannard's ear. If I'm not mistaken, they did that on purpose because he's supposed to be an MMA fighter in this series. And they do try to show some of that with this fighting scene, which I was like, come on, bro. Diamond is at least goddamn 20, 25 pounds bigger than this nigga, Jannard. And I'm like, I was thinking maybe they was going to do a whole thing with Tommy coming in because, you know, Tommy used to like to throw his hands on the original power. But this whole thing... With this fighting scene or whatnot, boxing slash MMA fighting, it was not it. I did not enjoy that. Whoever, the choreograph, the choreographer for the fighting scenes in this, hey, no, not this. I don't want to see this no more. But anyway, the relationship as far as Diamond and Jannard, it is definitely, definitely boiling over. And I did not see it going the way it goes this episode. And I'm like, damn, Jannard is really, really like trying to do his own thing, but it's at the extent of is he gonna try to like take diamond out or something like i'm just saying man you really really see the friction they have between each other in this uh particular episode or whatnot pertaining to friction with family the flynn family i gotta be honest man vic really really made me kind of like his character this episode as far as vic flynn honestly man because like i said that last episode i was thinking he was gonna start tripping out with the whole thing with tommy messing with old girl or whatnot that he is in love with and they actually dive deeper into the whole thing but going on between vic and his girl and honestly vic vic as far as vic flynn or whatnot this is like he is really about his business or whatnot and in this episode in particular he is really trying to get things together as far as the whole fleeing business and everything they got going to pertain to the streets or whatnot. And you really, really see the true colors of Walter Flynn in this episode. Like, he, they really dive into what's going on as far as the organizations and everything as far as, because Tommy is trying to come in as far as Chicago and he's trying to build his own thing and he's trying to build his own organization. But... You go, you got the Flynn family. You got everything that's going on as far as CIB or CBI. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong as far as the, uh, with Diamond and Jannard. And then you got the other ones as far as, you know, they start mentioning the whites and everything else. Because uh, the Flynn family, they the Irish or whatnot as far as Walter Flynn or whatnot. But they bring the whole race thing into this. And, you know, Tommy, he ain't starting to see color anything. So his whole thing, with, and as far as Tommy go is, you bring everybody together only color they're going to think about is green. But when it pertains to Walter, he is reminding you of that old man, that old school mentality, especially when it comes to the Irish, because you know the history, like Irish, Italian, this and the third, like, you know, blacks and whatnot, they really didn't really tangle together or whatnot like that, especially when it came to, like, mobs and street gangs and whatnot and all of that. So they really are diving into that, especially into this episode, and I think they're going to try to do more with that and pertain it to the season or whatnot because when it comes to this whole thing, pretty much Diamond is an influential part as far as Walter asking for him to be brought in, being that he was the main guy as far as CBI or CBI or CIB. I'm sorry if I'm saying the name wrong, but y'all let me know. Before he went to jail and even with him getting out, that's the whole thing and the friction going on between him and Jannard or whatnot. As far as JP, man, you pretty much are getting a hint from him that he is not with none of the, you know what I'm saying, as far as street stuff. He is not trying to be a part of the street shit. He ain't trying to be, like, involved with that type of stuff. 
and you see how when him and Tommy is talking, and especially with Tommy trying to help him out money wise or whatnot, and the whole thing with um his spot getting shot up or whatnot, and I'm really, really once again, I'm hoping that they're gonna get more into that because we don't really get too much more into that as far as you know the whole reveal with JP's son being the one that shot up his club and the fact that JP don't know that his son is one of the ones that's part of Diamond's organization and Tommy don't know that JP's son, which is his brother, his newfound brother that he didn't never know about, that his nephew is part of the whole organization or whatnot as far as Diamond and Janars or whatnot. So I'm really waiting for that revelation and I'm really waiting for that to come to light and I'm waiting for that. But um, as far as the whole thing between Tommy and JP, you really see how JP is not only trying to give Tommy a history and the thing I'm really enjoying about JP is that we are getting more history as far as Tommy. We're getting a lot of his backstory and him as a child, whether it's on videos or whether it's pictures or whatnot, we're getting a lot of things and JP is able to show him certain things. So now I got a question. Is JP JP as far as his brother? I'm not saying he's not his brother, but it's more going on with JP than just everything he said because I'm liking JP. I'm like, I'm loving the chemistry they having, but even with this episode, JP is like, yo, he not really trying to accept Tommy's you know, money or whatnot, depending on where it comes from or whatnot. So that's what's, as far as JP giving off that whole hint that he ain't trying to be a part of what's going on in the streets or whatnot and all of that. But I don't know, man. You know how power is and everything. I'm just trying to, I'm like, is JP got other things going on? Is JP might be low-key trying to set Tommy? I'm just saying I could be wrong, but you know how they try to throw these little things in here and whatnot. Another thing is finally, well, not really finally, but you got the whole thing going on as far as you can't have Tommy and you can't have uh, him doing all the things he's trying to do or these other organizations without bringing in some detectives or some type of cops. And now we're starting to get some uh, four-leaf detectives that's starting to, uh, starting to notice Tommy and starting to notice certain things going on. One thing I'm going to say, one of these cops they got playing, man, I'm not being funny when I feel like Everybody should get the opportunity to play, especially if you got a dream of doing something. Look what I'm doing as far as YouTube and whatnot. But, man, they got a cop in here that's an act. It's like this dude. And if y'all know the scene I'm talking about, they asking him questions. He just sitting up here like, I'm doing this. I'm doing the best I can. I'm looking out for you. And if y'all know what I'm talking about, it's one of the cops that Vic Flynn is talking to. And I guess he's a cop that's pretty much in bed with the Flynn family. But it's like the way he having these exchanges with Vic. And he like, I'm like, it's crazy. I'm, I'm just not, I was not feeling that part. I wasn't feeling that. I did not like it. Overall, though, the episode, I still enjoyed it. I really, I liked everything they got going on as far as what Tommy is trying to do. As far as his whole takeover of Chicago. And with him, the, we finally get him coming back and as far as the exchange between him and Walter Flynn because, you know, Walter Flynn pretty much told Tommy to leave town. You know, this is my city. You need to leave or whatnot. But Tommy being Tommy, I really, really enjoyed the exchange between him and Walter Flynn. And that's where you pretty much get that um, notice as far as who Walter Flynn really is because at last episode, we know that he's sick. And I'm wondering, like, are we going to get – are they going to kill off my man because I ain't even going to front – he is kind of like a racist asshole in this series or not, with the way the route they trying to go, but I like this actor. I do enjoy this actor. I forgot the character's name. I mean, the actor's name, but if I'm not if I'm mistaken, it's Tommy Flanagan. And like I said, I remember he was on Sons of Anarchy. That's my favorite. But anyway, man, I just really enjoy him as a character and the way they got things going. They kind of like, feel like they setting up for him to die, maybe. They could go a different route. I don't know, but it does kind of seem like they're setting up for him to die. And maybe they end up going a different route. But as far as the Flynn family, I can't forget about talking about Cla uh, Cla Claudia. Let me know if I got her name wrong, but Claudia Flynn, she's pretty much still on the outside as far as the whole street business-wise. Walter does not want her part of anything, but it's the way Walter is like talking to her. Remind you, this is his daughter. This is his kids. He pretty much out here trying to say, yo, Whatever he want or whatever he trying to get, he trying to use his daughter to do certain things. And it's like the way he talks to her is almost like he's talking to a prostitute or something. And if you watch the scene or if you have seen this episode, you know what I'm talking about. I was like, okay, you see why she's trying to do what she's trying to do. And you get this whole scene between her and Tommy, pretty much her trying to, 
I almost feel like she's trying to have her own thing. And Tommy pretty much trying to get her to come into his lane as far as join his organization because he can he know that Walter pretty much try not trying to have her have her part of anything pertaining to the streets or whatnot as far as what they're doing as far as the illegal stuff. He wants um, Claudia to stay on everything legal as far as uh, Walter Flynn, as far as Claudia Flynn go. He wants her to stay on everything legal. He don't want her part of nothing illegal. So that's really going to be interesting to see where they try to go with that. Like I said, I'm really, really interested to see what they try to do as far as Walter Flynn setting him up. Is he going to die? This like, damn, they all ain't going to bring my man in just for one season. I'm hoping they're going to do more with that. But overall, man, like I said, once again, being that we three episodes in, I'm enjoying this. I feel like Tommy is definitely holding his own. I like the way that they are giving him a lot more depth than just this crazy maniac drug dealer that's running around trying to take over Chicago. It's a lot more going on than him just trying to be the biggest drug dealer in Chicago. He got a lot more as far as story, and I'm really um, really enjoying the relationship between him and JP or whatnot. Like I said, I'm still kind of like, eh, what's going on with JP? Is he trying to set uh, Tommy up some type of way? But I might be wrong, and I'm pretty sure 99% chance I'm wrong, because even when JP started trying to mention uh, as far as maybe getting certain information with his mama, Tommy's like, hell no, I ain't talking to that crazy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be another interesting thing. Will we get an appearance from Kate in this as far as Tommy's mama? I will be interested to see that. But overall, man, as far as episode three, five start, I feel like this is another good episode. They're throwing some little things in here because, like I said, I wasn't expecting what we got between Diamond and Jannard. And the, as far as Jannard, like, he's seeming like he's willing to take it to another level. And that's going to be interesting to see, man. And the one, um, I ain't got his picture up, but shout out Jeremiah, man. Jeremiah doing his thing as far as, the, you know, the singer Jeremiah. You know, he's from Chicago. But shout out Jeremiah. He doing his thing in the series, man. Look like he's going to have a lot bigger role than I expected him to have. I thought he was going to have a little cameo here and there, but he looked like he's going to have a lot bigger role than I thought. Anyway... I'm definitely enjoying what they're doing with this. Like I said, side characters, I'm enjoying them. I thought Walter Flynn was going to be one note, but they giving him a little bit more this episode, and that's what I was wanting, even though they seem like they definitely set him up to be this racist old head. They don't want to work together. But one thing I'm really enjoying is what they're doing with Vic Flynn. I thought they was going to go the route of trying to make him super jealous to try to set Tommy up some type of way because of everything that was going on between him and the girl that he liked. But they actually give us more between not only the story between Vic and old girl, which I think her name is Gracie, but they let you know that Vic, he ain't like this simp ass nigga. Like he about this money. He trying to really get some things going. So I, they making me kind of enjoy Vic as far as Vic Flynn or whatnot. So, Hey, Overall, though, y'all let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about this recent episode of Power Book Force Season 1, Episode 3, Five Starter. Did y'all enjoy it? If you haven't seen it yet, you definitely need to check it out. As far as overall, Tommy having his own series, I'm definitely enjoying it, man. Well, I know we only three episodes in, but I'm enjoying what they've done and what they've been able to do so far. But overall, y'all let me know in the comment section if y'all enjoyed this. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. This is the road to 500 subs. Yes, we hit our 400 mark. Shout out to all my subscribers who knew, who newly recently subscribed. And shout out to all the subscribers who've been rocking with me since the beginning. I do appreciate everybody who's been taking the time just to watch me do my videos. I do appreciate it. But other than that, man, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to let you know when I upload new videos. A thousand yeah. times over. Sounds fun. I don't say no in this room. Money to be made. Okay. This is all kinds of wrong. I'm not used to people not following my orders. Good thing I ain't your people. I don't feel comfortable unless I know I went above and beyond with my preparation. The things that possibly could happen, if I ain't take real steps to prevent those things, I'm not comfortable. I can't walk around, you know, charismatic and happy. Nah, I gotta make sure, you know, we setting up some type of wealth because